The next item, again, is part of a collaboration with Michael Nyman, and it's out of a film called A Z and Two Noughts. One of the students said this afternoon how much they enjoyed the ending of this film, so we will show the ending of this film. There are three pieces of music, but something different is happening here. Michael Nyman is responsible for the major two pieces of music, but in between, like a sandwich, is a very kitsch piece of, you know, Noel Coward said how powerful cheap music is. It also has a child ambience too, so there are a lot of children in the film, so it refers to their particular perspective and characterization of things. Um, and also, it is interesting that the uh, fiddle player, I call him a fiddle player because he's a Romanian, uh, or responsible for the last piece, is a, a very good uh, now contemporary composer called Alexander Balanescu, whose name perhaps some of you know. And he and I have just signed a new contract to do a new project together. So the last time I met him was way back in the early 1980s. Both he and I have matured in different ways, so we hope for a brand new collaboration. So can we just see the ending, please, <coughs> of the Gentiles? Apparently, the dance of the snails, which is creating the destruction of the experiment, indeed, the destruction of the whole film, of course, it's bright and jaunty, which is the very opposite of what you'd expect. But that rather kitsch, beautiful, sweet little item involving the teddy bear's picnic is obviously associated with a grim event of these two rather stupid biologists seeking the meaning of life as though the filming of their death and ultimately their decay will somehow offer them an understanding of what evolution is all about. Again, the irony and the, uh, the, the skepticism of putting these two things together would relate to a particular ambience, which I hope would make you think. Uh, I am, after all, from the same country as um, Monty Python. There is a tradition <laughs> for very deliberate black humor in order to throw you off your feet, in a sense, to go against the grains of your expectation, so that you, in a sense, can handle these dualities at one and the same time, and to make obvious conclusions. All the clues are there. I leave you to make the summation, which I suppose is an indication of all my activity, of how life is both bizarre, but also very banal. I'm going to jump and not necessarily move in chronology. These are two products. I admittedly, I'm being very unfair here. I'm giving you snippets without context, but I'll try and give you as much context as I can within the time, and I think a lot of you might have seen these films under other circumstances anyway. So these are two films then where, on an auteur basis, the uh, musical soundtrack is basically dominated by one imagination of one composer. That is certainly one way of doing it. It gives an identity and a grip. But sometimes that can be a tyranny because it would mean, according to how brilliant and how prolific and how varied that composer was, you'd end up with maybe a certain sort of sameness, which could, could seem to be rather dull. So there's another way completely which I like to enjoy, which is much more to do, I suppose, with collage music, of being able to make um, a quite deliberate choice of different sorts of music, which constantly juxtapose one with another. So light with heavy, fast with slow, tumultuous with its opposites. Two or three years ago, uh, well, two years ago, because this year is 2002, I was asked by the Comune of Bologna to make a celebration of the Piazza Maggiore. The celebration uh, is in the university, university city. They claim, Bologna claims to be the first university in Europe. Certainly they date back to about 1050. <coughs> and um, it struck me as being relative to make a production in this huge uh, town square which was related to text and writing. Just consider the huge amounts of text and writing being manufactured by the University of Bologna over a thousand years. It was structured very much to do with the history of the town, uh, Bologna being a crossroads between north and south and east and west, and I suppose center of the schism between Roman Catholicism and Protestantism, and a whole series of scholars of all sorts of persuasions were continually passing in and out of that town. The, the Piazza Maggiore in the center of uh, Bologna is a classic Italian town piazza, surrounded by all the significant institutions. The church, cathedral on one side, the 17th century shopping mall on the second side, a town hall dating back to the 12th century on the third side, and a regal ducal palace on the fourth side. Big flat, uh, um, 
facades. I didn't want to interrupt the spaces by hanging screens during the day, which is always extremely ugly. And I deliberately wanted to make projections straight onto the facades of these buildings. The facades themselves were very varied. They were punctured, of course, by windows. They were made up of brick and stone and legends. So in a sense, they were like vibrant screens. We also had, and this will not be manifest in the film, a complex dramatic um, uh, lighting, theatrical lighting system with lighting in, all, in, in the interior of the buildings as well. And in order to structure our program, we made a 25-minute musical soundtrack which traced out the history in association with text, Italian text, of the city. And based and hung upon that soundtrack, we created a projection program and also all the theatrical lights. So that element, unfortunately, will not be seen. And this, in some ways, because it's a VHS tape, is a terrible approximation. You will find that the screen is divided into four parts. And imagine the top part here is being thrown on a huge facade of the cathedral. The part that's here is shown on the town hall. The part here is shown on the 17th century shopping mall. And the part here is shown on the palace. So imagine these are huge. These letters are something like maybe, I don't know, maybe 12 to 14 meters high. So the gesture is very, very big indeed. The square, the Piazza Maggiore, is um, quite large. And about 5,000 people can get in it. So imagine being a huge square surrounded by this excitement. The format has been put together like this, obviously for convenience. So indeed, I can show it under a situation like this. But uh, the emphasis here, of course, is very much to do with the musical soundtrack. It's a collage, a collage that relates to Bolognese music. It's a great center of music uh, scholarship. It's a collage of Italian music. And I think for those who are very musically minded, you will find all sorts of quotations. Some of them are very, very obvious indeed, like the Marseillaise. But also, if you are a Messian fan, you will see sections from his opera about St. Francis. Could we see the next clip? Per paura che, nella migliore delle ipotesi, la sua torre gettasse un'ombra permanente sulle loro case e, nella peggiore, che la torre, diventata troppo alta, crollasse sulle loro teste. 1789, rivoluzione francese. 1795, agosto, morte del rivoluzionario Zamboni. 1796, morte del rivoluzionario De Rolandis. 1796, 19 giugno, i francesi invadono Bologna dalla Repubblica Cisalpina. 1805, Napoleone diventa imperatore ereditario. 1814, congresso di Vienna. Bologna ritorna al Papa. 1815, battaglia di Bata. Sedette per tre notti d'inverno sul parapetto della sua torre per osservare l'annunciato passaggio di una cometa che non arrivò mai. Egli morì congelato prima che la sua fede nelle predizioni astronomiche potesse venire smentita. Gli austriaci reprimono la guerra di indipendenza italiana. 